All right, Mopar people, welcome back to the channel. I'm just Mopar Joe. I'm at Mr. Rick Seaman's place again. We're going to check out these Edelbrock heads and see if they are really out of the box ready for Dave's 500 stroker. It says it right there, bolt on, out of the box, and go. But we're not really sure of that. Here's our part number that we need, and I went with the 84cc chamber because, also hydraulic rubber cam, we're going to check the springs. Uh, we needed that for our compression. He wants to drive this on the street, so this will be a flat top stroker engine with a little bit bigger chamber for so he can run pump gas. So I'm going to get them unboxed and start. 188, 189, 189.5. 189.5 is the installed height. On the exhaust. On the exhaust. I'm popping the springs off now. He's going to get ready, and we're going to squeeze one in a minute and see what the spring pressure is actually on these heads. Intake, same? Or what, 91 or so? We got the install sheet. We're looking for what they rate the spring pressure at. It's got to be online somewhere if it's not in that sheet. But. Yeah. I think this is for all of the heads they make out of that casting, and we need to get it for the... 6891? Yeah, for this particular configuration as far as springs and everything. Installed height first. We're going to like uh, 193, uh, kind of split the middle because we're where we're at. So at 193, we've got one twenty six. Does that sound about right for a hydraulic roller? I think so. Okay. So we got 126, 126 on the seat. And then we're gonna go down to 541 lift, which would be 1.354. Hydraulic rollers take more than regular old flat tap it, 1.354. So we got 360, 359, 360. Sounds good. 360 at 1.354. So, so he's got at the at the way they're installed. 126 on the seat and 360 open. And those, those numbers probably match his cam. Yep. And the world's going to be fine. It's not. That's hand blended. That's kind of wonderful, isn't it? It looks pretty good. Wow, that's beautiful. Wow. Very nice. It didn't have all the crazy steps like the stealth heads did. But I, I had to touch a bunch of that up because this the seat was over that way and that was that way. And well, look up, you know, they hand blended that. That's beautiful. The seat's pretty. You know. Can you tell on angles? Like, oh, uh, I'm only counting one angle, but boy, it sure does look good. Let's check more holes. So for surface finish, that little spot right there is kind of substantial. I think I'll run a little fine stone or something over it. But the, for the most part, the rest of it's pretty good. That big scratch was in there. I don't know how that got there, but this, uh, there's another little bubble there or something. So far, so good. He's measuring the diameter of the valve so we'd know, check for differences. And check the guide clearance because if your guides are too tight, your valves could hang open, seize open, and it would be a bad day for Dave and for everybody else involved. So if you don't check it, you don't know. So, so we figured out the valves have a little different clearance, right? A, a little three tenths on the exhaust valves are three tenths smaller. Valve there. Uh, 
over there. I don't know what, uh, you know, Edelbrock was saying, but it looks like he got about a thou on the, on the intake. Now we'll set up and do the exhaust. On to the exhaust. Well, that's good. It's got more on the exhaust, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's more like the 1.3 or whatever that I that was made up in the valve. Mm -hmm. So it looks like you've got about a thou on the intake and uh, 1.3 on the exhaust. So you shouldn't have a seized up valves. Look at how beautiful, they, they CNC'd that opening and look how they hand blended that. I mean, it's just, it, it's just beautiful work. For that, you know, that, that price point head, I think that looks pretty good. Mike, touch that one little spot right there. Got a little spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little spot to touch. Right here, same one. Mm -hmm. That's where the CNC machine stopped. Mm -hmm. And they just didn't hand blend. This is a combination of CNC port opening and then they hand blended. And they just missed a couple little spots. But very nice stuff. Well, there we are. For our video, I blued those up. And I'm going to lap these valves in so we can see just exactly what's going on with them. How well they seal or don't or whatever. And I thought I'd bring you along for the journey. I don't, don't want to waste this stuff. I've done that one so far and it looks pretty good. There we go. Sound change. Oh yeah, it's lapping in. Come back. I think that'll show us something. Let me do him while I'm here. Maybe. Okay, they said 1.2 uh, on the intake and 1.5 on the exhaust. Mm. So you think we're a little tight or what? No. I think Ray is a racer. I think Ray and all engine builders Make sure it's got plenty of sense. And they air it. They, they want more. It shows us all the way around on that one. Let's see what. There we go. You can see just a little bit of kind of chattery looking mark there on that one seat. I may run over it again. But the valve looked pretty good. There's exhaust. I think for the most part, he's done. So back at my place, I just took a Sharpie marker and I've marked the chambers on the Edelbrock head. 
And I've got Dave's 500 block. It's a 400 we're turning into a 500. So it's, I think, like 33 thousandths over or something. I'm going to bolt our head on. We're going to look at it from the bottom. I'm just going to lightly score and kind of see how the chambers line up on this head versus this block. Um, is it far shifted one way or the other? A lot of that stuff could be different. Um, I tend to trust the old iron like this more than I would like new production, but that's totally my opinion and I have no science to base that on. Um, except the people who say they used to make stuff better. So I'm gonna get our head bolted on and we'll- So we can on. just take it cylinder by cylinder here. Get you zoomed in some more. Uh, there we go. It hangs the opposite direction of what you'd want on that exhaust valve there. So I don't know how to point at this correctly, but about the eight o'clock position. So through there, if I stick my hand down, I can feel a pretty significant, I'm gonna make an imprint on my finger so you can see it. That's how much I can push in on that. So it is not only untrouted, but shrouded uh, more than it, untrouted more than it needed to be. Okay. So you can see a bit of that there. That's on the exhaust side. So less than ideal, just because um, you would rather all that be a nice alignment there we are. Uh, fairly similar. The intake is borderline. You know, in a perfect world, you'd be able to mark that uh, and clearance it, cut it, do whatever you want to yourself. But we've got a little bit extra overhang on both sides. It looks like the exhaust is less drastic here. Where my finger is. It'll zoom. There we go. So it is less drastic there. Intake. Ah, uh, yeah, not not perfect. I'm gonna get them marked up in just a minute with the little tiny edges, but you, they're pretty well very similar. Here's cylinder three. Here is the good old Felpro 8519 gasket. I wouldn't be afraid to run this on this head, but I wanted to show you when it was in the block, we were tight on the exhaust side, right through there. So that was hanging into the bore. The gasket's gonna help bridge that a little bit, but our fire ring, get in here, it gets a little bit tight there. So what I was gonna do is just mark this with a gasket, then I'll flip it over. I'll put our gasket onto the block so we'll see that. It's kind of the difference in the two. Here's your good example. I'll have to brag on this block actually and say it does not have that giant chamfer all the way around the top like a lot of big blocks do. If it did, I've even had a gasket like this leak before, this exact gasket on a 440 that had that really big chamfer. So for this to be a 78 model block and not have that is pretty magical to me, but but you see right right through here and here, if that head was flipped straight over, that's where our valves are hanging in here. So I wanna show you again how tight, I could barely even scribe it there around that exhaust valve. And right through there, the line basically just fades and goes away. I mean, it's not, there you can see it a little tighter. So it all is pretty close, but currently the uh, the head right there is on the top side of the block. So it would be kind of hanging where my fingernail is. And in a perfect world, you know, you would like better alignment. Obviously you have to have a gasket that is larger than both, but I think they probably could have tightened that up just a little bit. If you're, especially if you're going to use this, excuse me, if you're going to use this head on a 383 or 413, something with a smaller bore, 361, if you're into that sort of thing, um, 
you know, that's increasingly, it would, it would basically exacerbate your problem. There's a hundred dollar word of the over shrouding. So basically the mixture is going to be tumbling. It can't, it's not going straight in. It's got to hit that lip and then tumble back. So something to think about overall, I like these heads and I, I'm glad I was able to show you that just real quick on here. I'm not going to grind or touch any of this stuff. There's absolutely no need. It's so close. I don't think you would see two horsepower or obviously you, you would never feel any horsepower increase driving this car. Um, if that was unshrouded at that point, we have, we've seen it before. Uh, I think on my E street heads, there was quite a bit of overhang there. So here they are. Well, here's number two head. See my valves are back in. The lines were crooked because I've already had them all out. We didn't see anything weird with lapping or any of that, but I think this might be a good option of a head for somebody out there, especially if you're going hydraulic roller. Um, all the springs were within like half a pound of each other that we checked. So all that's good. It matches the cam nicely. And I think it's going to be a good deal. So here they are again. If you haven't, Go check out, we uh, also pulled apart some stealth heads a while back, so I can put a link to that here if you're looking at buying big block Mopar cylinder heads. I appreciate y'all watching, and I'll catch you next time. people.